Good day everyone, for this video we'll be discussing about the strengths and limitations of quantitative research. To start of our discussion, one of the strengths of quantitative research is scientific objectivity. Scientific objectivity means that quantitative data can be interpreted with statistical analysis. And since statistics is based on the principles of mathematics, the quantitative approach is viewed as scientifically objective and rational. This is according to Carr in 1994 and Denscombe in 2010. Now we all know that quantitative research is always associated with statistical analysis because quantitative research involves numeric data, numeric figures, and different statistical treatments that are used in order to interpret data and come up with results and conclusions. When we say objective and rational, objective in the simplest description means fair or unbiased, while rational means reasonable and logical. The main reason why quantitative research is considered to be scientifically objective and rational is because the results are based on actual figures, meaning there's numeric evidence based on the results of a particular study. Let's consider this example here. In Village A, a researcher decided to conduct a survey to 3,600 individuals. And the question is, are you in favor of mass testing? The researcher then gives out research questionnaires to these participants and waits for their answers. The researcher then tallies all the responses, and based on their answers, the researcher is able to come up with the following data. Those who answered yes are 2,700 or 75% of the total population, while those who answered no are 900 or 25% of the total population. Based on these data, the researcher is able to come up with the following conclusions. Majority is in favor, therefore, Village A is in favor of mass testing. The reason why we have these conclusions is because of what we would call numeric evidence or proof of the results of the research. To continue our discussion, another strength of quantitative research is replication. It means that quantitative data is based on measured values and can be checked by others because numeric data is less open to ambiguities of interpretation. Hypotheses can also be tested because of the use of statistical analysis. This is according to Antonius in 2003. Now when we say based on measured values, measured values meaning numeric or quantitative data. When we say that it can be checked by others, we only simply mean that it can be verified through the repetition of tests and statistical treatment. And lastly, hypothesis that can be tested means either rejecting or accepting the hypothesis that has been formulated at the beginning of the research. In terms of hypothesis testing, let's consider this example here. A researcher is conducting an experiment on chemical versus organic fertilizers. His initial hypothesis is that chemical fertilizers are better than organic fertilizers. In order to determine whether this hypothesis is true or not, he needs to come up with two setups. The first one is a plant that uses an organic fertilizer, and the other one is a plant that uses a chemical fertilizer. Now, over a period of a specified number of days, the researcher will then observe and determine whether there are differences or similarities in terms of the plant growth between the organic and chemical fertilizer. At the end of the observation period, the researcher will then compare the results. Based on this particular example, we can come up with the conclusion that organic fertilizers are better than chemical fertilizers thus rejecting the original hypothesis which has been stated earlier. At this point, we shall now proceed with discussing the limitations of quantitative research. One of the limitations is context. 
which means that quantitative experiments do not take place in natural settings. This is because experiments are conducted in controlled environments for usually two purposes. The first one is to control the variables in the study, and the second one is to establish a cause and effect relationship. It is also worth noting that experiments are conducted in controlled environments because they follow a standardized procedure for purposes of replication. This is considered as a limitation because results may change if the experiment is conducted in the natural setting. Let's go back to our example earlier of the experiment about the use of fertilizers on plant growth. In a controlled environment, a researcher controls everything. External factors such as insects, pollution, weather, and environment are limited so as not to hinder or affect the growth of the plant. Furthermore, other variables such as amount of water, type of fertilizer used, sun exposure, and soil nutrients are moderated as they influence how the plant will grow. Whereas in a natural setting, because the plant is already exposed to external factors, the results might not be the same. Another limitation of quantitative research is in relation to research expertise. Poor knowledge of the application of statistical analysis may negatively affect analysis and subsequent interpretation. This is according to Black in 1999. Now, it is worth noting that whenever a researcher would conduct quantitative research, he must be knowledgeable of the different statistical treatments used. As such, he must be able to answer the following questions. What are the different statistical treatments? When are these applied? And most importantly, how are they conducted and interpreted? This is considered as a limitation because when a researcher uses the wrong statistical treatment, it might lead to wrong data analysis, which will then lead to wrong data interpretation, which would render the results totally invalid. Another limitation of quantitative research is variability of data quantity. Large sample sizes are needed for more accurate analysis. Small-scale quantitative studies may be less reliable because of the low quantity of data. This is according to Denscombe in 2010. Now, quantitative research usually requires large sample sizes because it is for accurate generalization about the general population that it represents. It is also worth noting that in quantitative research, the larger the sample population is, the more accurate the results tend to be. Take for example the following situations. From a total number of 3,000 people, simply selecting a sample of 100 participants is considered to be inaccurate as it is not sufficient enough to represent the entire population. However, once we apply the Slovin's formula, we are able to come up with a total number of 350 representatives which is considered to be accurate as it is considered valid to represent the entire population. And lastly, another limitation of quantitative research is confirmation bias. The researcher might miss observing phenomena because of focus on theory or hypothesis testing rather than on the theory of hypothesis generation. When we say confirmation bias, it also refers to the tendency to leave out other significant findings in favor of preconceptions. This may lead to statistical errors, invalid conclusions, and even false claims. Let's take for example this researcher here who claims that gasoline can be used as a disinfectant. In order to prove his claims, he conducted a research wherein he found out that there are no germs and bacteria present in gasoline. As a result, he concluded that gasoline can indeed be used as a disinfectant. This is totally wrong because the researcher fails to see that prolonged exposure to gasoline has health hazards such as nausea, dizziness, vomiting, and even headaches. Again, confirmation bias is risky because it lacks sufficient evidences and valid supporting details. In conclusion, Recognizing the different strengths and limitations of quantitative research 
helps student researchers to determine how to conduct quantitative research more effectively by focusing on the strengths and avoiding the limitations.